People, 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 good morning, good morning. You know who it is, Arsenio Buck reporting live from Bangkok. It's crazy, man. I saw a storm just brewing right behind me as I was walking with my washed clothes from this lady who normally dry cleans them. Hurried on home, and it looks like this storm shift real fast and head west instead of heading north towards my way. So, it's I'm all in the green as far as working out. So, anyways, with that being said, people... Uh, I, uh, taught my first, um, it's an intermediate conversation class where I work, and there's about six people, and we were talking about, uh, using repressed emotion constructively, uh, and so, what had happened, I'm gonna tell you guys a nice little story, okay, now back, uh, my sophomore year of high school, 10th grade, or grade 10 as they say it in Aussie and Britain, uh, I was... So I, let's just say, you know, going through all those emotions as a teenager and stuff like that. Like the particular girl, she didn't like me back. Liked another girl that I liked over the summer, and she didn't like me back, and she stopped talking to me. It is what it is. But when the time came, I just saw that all that emotion as far as uh, my mom losing her job, us not having, you know, that, that enough money to eat and do this and do that. We had a lot of problems, okay? This is probably about 13 years ago. And after the New Year's, well, even before Christmas, luckily my mom was able to sell her car and she was able to deliver us a wonderful uh, Christmas and went into New Year's and stuff like that. And it just seemed like, I don't know, every time I played video games shortly after, my mom got a job, so everything was great in January. But it just seemed like I still had so much emotion inside. So much emotion to the point where I used to play, like, Blitz 2003, which is an American football game. And it used to make me so goddamn angry. I used to slam the controller. I used to cry at times. We're talking, I'm a, th- what, I'm a, a train wreck. I'm 15 years old. My mom used to say, boy, stop playing that goddamn game! You know, if you don't want to play that game, get your ass off the game, and blah, 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 it's crazy. And I used to just react so emotionally to, like, different basketball games, because I was a big UNC fan, as I, uh, am a big hater of them now. <laughs> big UNC fan back then. So every time they lost, or lost to, like, let's say Duke, Duke University, who's their arch rival, I used to get so angry. And my mom started, you know, asking her friend, who's, like, the, you know, I guess... I don't know, a boyfriend at one point and all that stuff, but he was like a father to me. And she started asking him, you know, is, is something wrong with my son? You know, is he, he's very emotional, he's, he's, he's angry, and maybe it was, I was suffering from depression because of those two ridiculous girls, yada, yada, yada. And I still remember one day, this guy named Manning, uh, we were in, what, what, what science was it? I think earth science or some kind of, bi- no, biology. We were in biology. And he was like, hey, Arsenio, are you going to be doing uh, track and field tryouts for tomorrow? And this, of course, was a Friday the eve before. So I was like, oh, yeah, man, I would love to do track and field. And he's like, okay, come with me. Let's go to Coach Meyer. So there I go. I meet Coach Meyer, who was one of the funniest guys ever, but so inspirational. And he was just so much on my side. Unbelievable guy. Uh, And he said... Hey, yeah, and, you know, I shook his hand, and he, obviously, he just gave off that, that aura of, like, just being so cool. He was like, yeah, man, come out tomorrow. And, uh, so I went out, and I thought, seriously, before I even thought uh, about track and field, I thought I was extremely fast, but I had a real bad, (laughs) I had a real rude awakening. And, uh, yeah, I wasn't as fast as I thought I would be. And so I ended up, I still remember my first track meet was in Bullhead City, Arizona, and I still remember when I ran the 110 meter high hurdles, uh, because it was one one practice. Coach pulled me aside and he's like, "Hey, uh, Arsenio, come over here, come this way." He pulled me aside. One of my literally childhood friends at the time, Terrence McGill, pulled him aside and pulled another tall guy named Cameron aside. Cameron Butt, he's now a model, which is crazy. But anyways, I uh, pulled this aside and he's like, "Hey, I want you to practice going over these sticks." And, of course, those sticks were the hurdles. And so we were practicing, practicing. I didn't have my footing down. I wasn't three-stepping. I was, like, five-stepping. And it was terrible. All in all, I went down to, uh, what is it, Bullhead City, Arizona for the first track meet. It was an invitational. A lot of schools from Arizona, northern Arizona stuff came on through. And I remember my first race, I was running with Terrence, and I was running in the varsity heat, which was insane, uh, which is the first heat. 
And I remember I did so terrible to the point that afterwards, that emotion, that emotion from all those days, it came out again. And, you know, I cried a little bit. And then I remember this girl named Dania. Uh, she's a friend at the time. She's like, hey, don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. And, you know, I was just such a train wreck because I was still dealing with those emotions. You know what I mean? But I remember we ran the 300 meter hurdles and that race I did unbelievably well in. And so I was so ecstatic and I was telling my mom and this and that. And at that given time, on that specific day, I was able to turn all that negative emotion, anger, all that repression, everything you could imagine. I was able to turn it into something positive. I was able to use all that for my running, you know. And so as time went on, you know, I got better and better and went into the regional championships and all this stuff, you know, over the next couple of years and stuff like that. But that's what you have to do, people. A lot of people are dealing with all sorts of, uh, let's just say, you know, life. Let's just call it life. And a lot of people deal with that, frankly, every single day. But the thing is, that's why I still do, you know, I work out. I do Tough Mudder as I did last October in Australia. Uh, I do races and stuff like that. I use all the stuff that I deal with, which is not much anymore because luckily I've been reading Jack Canfield's book, uh, in Napoleon Hill's book. And I've been able to say, Hey, you know what black is that? <laughs> that's, that's something you just developed as an idea and you just believed it, you know, and you used it as a, as an excuse. But I let go of that. So now I'm, I don't deal with those type of emotions anymore. But still, when I go to the gym and I go running, especially when I go running outside and a lot of people are staring at me crazy or, you know, women are just staring at my butt. No, I'm kidding. Well, I'm not kidding. But uh, when I go running and stuff, I always use all that emotion or I. it's just freedom. You need to find your freedom. You need to find your therapy as uh, The Rock has said. You know, he says gym is his therapy. And, you know, when I'm in the gym and I'm going crazy in there and I'm just lifting hard and I'm like, yeah, you know, and all that stuff and singing while I'm running or doing this and that. It's 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 a way to escape everything, not escape reality, because there's a, I mean, I love reality. You know, I'm at that point in life where I can actually enjoy myself wherever I am. But I use it again so I can. I'm, it's going towards a goal. A lot of people say, oh, I want to work out. You know, it's always I want, I want, I want rather than just getting up at 5.30 a.m. and going for a walk or whatnot. And it's it, – believe me, especially in America, we're talking about 200 million overweight or obese people who live in America. That's 66 percent of the population, Las Vegas being one of the most obese cities in uh, in America. And a lot of people say, oh, I want to do this, I want to do that. Well, guess what? It's never going to happen until you just shut off your mind and go out there and do it. Especially with people who are dealing with stuff at work or doing this and doing that. That's what the gym is for. It's for you to take out all that anger. Luckily, my gym even has a boxing bag. So there was one time I got into a massive confrontation with some poor minivan driver because he was just being ignorant. And I remember I went to the gym that night and I was just hitting the bag crazy and people were looking at me crazy and stuff like that. But you have to use whatever's happening in your life. If you're dealing with some sort of emotion, it could be anything. You need to use that constructively. Find your therapy and find out what you can do to release all those emotions. Because if you leave them in bottled up, that's what happens as far as like school shootings and all that stuff, you know? So that's what I'm encouraging you to do today. Find your therapy. Find your therapy. And again, I'm going, I'm still currently reading the next uh, principle, which is going to be coming out very soon. So stay tuned for that. And with that being said, I'm going to go hit this gym. Have a wonderful morning, afternoon, and evening. This is your host, Arsenio. Over and out.